OpenAI have now made it a hundred times easier to do file searches with an AI prompt. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that first of all using the OpenAI Playground, and then I'll be showing you how you can add it into your own no-code app built with Bubble.io. But before I launch into that, if you're learning Bubble or you want to build your own web app and soon to be mobile app because the Bubble native app builder is coming really soon, there's no better place to learn how to do that than on our website, planetnocode.com because it's like we've trained ChatGPT on hundreds and hundreds of Bubble and no code tutorials and you can just query and you can find precisely the video that you're looking for. But let's dive into this demo. So I'm just gonna show you in the uh, OpenAI Playground, you need to have a developer account for this. This is separate to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is their like consumer focused product. We're looking at the developer focused product. And um, this is how easy they've made it. So first of all, you just go into uh, storage and then go into vector stores and you create a new um, new vector store and what a vector store allows you to do is that oh let me refresh that I did just delete one let's try that again uh, create uh, cool and I'll just name it test what a vector store allows you to do is to upload files and those files get chunked that's the process of taking a document that is saving hundreds of pages and splitting it up um, based on token count. Tokens are kind of three to four characters. And so it breaks up the document. And this is all part of dealing with a core limitation of, of uh, LLMs, um, GPT models um, from the start, which is that you don't want to supply hundreds and hundreds of pages uh, in your prompt. You want to only supply what is relevant to answering the user's question. And that's what vectorizing does. It will allow you to upload a big PDF and then uh, have the PDF, uh, have OpenAI answer questions, drawing out only the relevant data from the PDF. Now, if you have been doing this with the assistance endpoint, that is in beta, there is a reason it's in beta, there's a reason to be wary about beta software, and that's because they will be retiring the assistance endpoint, uh, they say 2026. That is because they have released the responses endpoint, we've already got a video demoing that, but I'm gonna show it in this video too. Uh, and you can do it all with responses. They want you to go all in on responses. So let's begin uh, by um, adding some files. So I'm gonna go add file and I'm gonna upload a research PDF that I was reading a few days ago about burnout. Okay, there's my PDF. You can customize things like chunk overlap and token size. Uh, it's just worth reading and understanding exactly how chunking works. Um, but we can just go ahead and say attach and that's going to work straight away. So now we need the vector uh, store ID. And you can see we can have more than one file here. So you can set up vector stores for different users. Basically everything that we're doing here, you can even add an expiration policy. Cool. Um, everything we're doing here, you can do through the OpenAI API, but they've made this uh, graphical user interface so that we can do it um, much more easily. Uh, so let's copy the uh, vector ID and now we go back into the playground and on tools we can say file search and then we can say select vector store, paste it in, there it is. Uh, so now I can ask a question. So I'll say uh, when was this research paper written and list all the authors. Okay, so it's searching files and we get back the authors and when it was written. So how cool is that? Just make sure that we're using the responses API up here and then we can even go into the code and we can see exactly what's happened. And this will look fairly familiar if you've built anything with the OpenAI API and with Bubble so far. So how do we take this and how do we uh, change it uh, so that it works or, or take this and how do we get this to work in a Bubble app? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you next. Bubble.io is an immensely powerful no-code web app and soon to be mobile app development tool. And we will be using the OpenAI um, developer API documentation here. Uh, and this is a skill that will literally enable you to connect your app to thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of other external services. In this case, we're doing it with OpenAI and we will be doing a file search. So um, here's the documentation um, in the responses uh, section of all of the different things you can do with the OpenAI API. And I wanna be able to take this and put it into my bubble app. So 
let's go over to my demo app. Here's one that I made earlier. I'm don't worry, I'm gonna explain it all. Um, because this is based on the previous video where I was simply showing how you can use the responses endpoint in place of chat completion or the assistance API. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, collapse this. Um, but before, I'm just gonna run you through what's here. So uh, we've named it, I've just called it OpenAI 2025. Uh, private key in header, uh, your private key is like your password. You wanna make sure that it isn't shared with the users in your app. So you have to tell Bubble that it's special and that it should be kept private. The key name is authorization and then you write bearer and your API key in there. Um, how do I know that? Well, because I'm just copying what's in this part here. So our endpoint is responses. I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. Uh, and then it's authorization bearer and our API key. Notice that uh, also in the header is content type application JSON. I don't need to add that in as Bubble has now made that a default behind the scenes unless you were to supply a alternative value. Uh, so let's go back into our Bubble app and add a new call. Um, or the first call if you uh, haven't followed along with the previous video and we will say uh, ask a question of a file. I'm gonna set this as an action. That's because I want like a button click, like a send button to run this rather than it to be uh, like uh, checking the weather when the page loads, that's what data's for. It's gonna be of type post and I'm pasting in the endpoint. How do I know it's post? Well, it says post here. And you'll get the idea, a lot of developer documentation looks very similar to this. So once you know how to translate it into bubble, like I say, you've got thousands, hundreds of thousands of possibilities of what you can build. Um, and then we need the data section or the body. So I'm gonna copy this, go across and paste it into here. Uh, now, what do we need to update? Well, we need to update the vector store ID. So go back into storage, get the vector store ID and paste that into here. And then uh, I'm going to just test it. So in Bubble, there's a process called initialize. This is our way of testing, first of all, that there are no errors in what I've produced so far. And then secondly, it's gonna train Bubble on what to expect as the format, the structure of what is responded. Um, so I'm gonna ask the same question again. Uh, when was this paper written? And I'm just gonna go straight ahead and initialize the call. So. Bubble doesn't have streaming yet. They have said that streaming is planned for release at the end of March in their most recent community update on the forum. So that's why there is a short delay because uh, GPT-4.0 is a intelligent model. It's one of their flagship models. So there is a slight delay in it processing um, because we wait until the whole response comes back. And uh, here's what we get. Oh, and it gives sources. I wasn't even aware that it did that. So if I scroll down and go raw data, you can see um, we get back uh, outputs, we get back uh, our question, and then we get back uh, messages. And then in the content, we get back text. Here's the answer. And we also get back annotations. Um, and uh, it even tells us what file was used. So that's particularly useful. Oh, I do remember when uh, we were first started using the OpenAI API, so many people are asking for sources and now you can get sources uh, back on your custom files. Uh, okay, so let's take this and uh, add it into a really simple rough bit of UI on a page. I'm gonna start by clicking save because that's training bubble uh, in how the responses come back. We are gonna note that the bit that we want is in the second output content uh, text. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and just add in a really quick page. Uh, say responses API with files. Okay, this is not a lesson in UI design or responsive web development. You would of course be using layout uh, rows and columns if you were building an app that you want to look great but I just want this to be quick. So I'm gonna drag in the multi-sign input. I'm gonna drag in a button and I'm gonna drag in some text, a text because I want to show my response. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger uh, and um, 
you can of course save responses uh, to your, your database and you would need to do that if you wanted to actually have a chat interface. Now we've got a whole course covering that. It will be using the chat completion endpoint, but I think that the, uh, the ability to just plug in the responses endpoint is really quite simple. Though if you want a video on that, of course you can leave a comment, you can reach out to us. Uh, so I'm going to use custom states. Custom states are like a variable. You can add, add them to any element on the page. I like to add them to the page because then I don't forget where they are. And I'm going to say response. And so this is going to be where I'll save the output uh, from the OpenAI API call. And then I just want to print that response. Uh, so I would find the page response or responses is what I named it. So now anything that I put in that variable in that custom state is going to be displayed in this text box. Uh, let's just rename this to send uh, and then I'm going to put some initial content in because if I have to keep testing this it's going to get annoying if I have to keep rewriting so I'm going to say when was this paper written. Okay let's add it in and let's add in our first workflow so I'm going to say add workflow that takes us through to the workflow editor here if it doesn't look quite like this that's because I'm using the new layout of the workflow editor um, but the actions will work the same at least uh, for now uh, so I'm going to go ahead and search for OpenAI uh, 2025 and it's literally named what I've named it in the bubble API connector but I don't want to kind of had to deal with the code here. I want to insert text in a specific place and I want to ensure that that text is uh, made JSON safe because if I were to like say send some speech marks along with it then I'm going to get a syntax error because it's not clear to the OpenAI API well what is code and what is actual text. So let's go back to our uh, API connector and I want to just replace this bit and I'm replacing the speech marks because the JSON save operation, the modifier, the text modifier in bubble, it adds in speech marks on the outside. So I'm simply just gonna say input. Now, if I reinitialize this, I'm going to get an error because the input is now empty. So if I wanted to reinitialize it, I would simply put the speech marks back in. Uh, when was this paper written? And I should be able to reinitialize it and get uh, the same response back. Yep, perfect. Uh, yep, May 14th, 2009. Excellent. Uh, so let's go back to design, back to our workflow. Uh, now it's only giving us the, and I use triangle, so different parts of the API connector use different uh, punctuation to symbolize when it's a dynamic field. In the body section, it's triangle brackets. That's why I wrote it as input. So here I take my multi-line input, its value, and then I JSON save it. That's what I mean by JSON safe. And again, we've got videos covering all of that, and you can explore loads of content uh, on our website, planetmoco.com, by becoming a member. Uh, now I want to save the response and this is where I think it is getting slightly more complicated compared to just the standard chat completion that we've been working with for a few years now. So I'm going to say set state, find my custom state and then this might even take me a few goes which is to find the right bit. So as a reminder what we can do we can go straight back and we can go modify and we can say right where's the bit we want so we've got output and output is a list um, but it's not in the first is that right it, oh it is it is it's okay right so output output is not a list output is uh, an object that is a list This is testing my knowledge of JSON. I think it is a, okay. Uh, it's in content. This is why I said it might take me a few goes. Uh, it's in content and it's in text or we could do content filter by type equals output text. I'm gonna probably just guess it and hope that it works and debug it if it doesn't. Uh, so we've got output. Yeah, output is a list. So then we say first item uh, content and then content is also a list uh, and so I think we'd say first item text. Now this is just, we're going to debug it if it doesn't work. So now I'm going to click preview and we're going to give it a test. So here's our page, let's send it. 
you can see that there is a loading bar going across the top. That's Bubble waiting for a response from the API. And uh, we can see that that's not worked. So great, I get to show you how we can debug in Bubble. So I'm gonna go step by step and um, then click send. Now this doesn't actually delay what's going on. It more just gives you a way to view what has happened or is happening step by step. So I'm gonna say run uh, and then we see that this is empty. So the output uh, is not empty. First item. Okay, so first item is what I've written. Now this is where I was just getting a bit confused. If you want to make this easy for yourself, copy and paste the output JSON into like a JSON formatter where you can view it as a tree, and then it's going to show you, you can just Google that, uh, then it's going to show you how it breaks it down. So I'm actually going to say second item's content. Uh, yes, yes, so that isn't actually available. Let's go back in here. So rather than output first item, I'm going to go item number two. And then I'm quite confident that's going to work. So I'm going to refresh the page. I'm going to go back to normal and then just click send. And there I get it back. That is how you can uh, search through files with OpenAI uh, and you can add it into your bubble app.